Hello everyone, this is DJ from GarageFarm.net Academy and welcome to the second part of the Powder Blast tutorial. In this part I'm going to cover lighting and shading our simulation to get a cool looking final render. So let's get straight into Blender. To do the shading part I just opened the file with the simulations baked to cache. I opened it up in the 2.80. It displays the smoke a little bit differently than the previous version. Let's switch to cycles GPU. You can go to a rendered preview and right now you can see that nothing renders. Cycles is rendering the whole volume as a box so our domain is not using the smoke simulation data. Let's go to a shading panel here and set up shading for our domain. So let's select the cube of the domain and let's press use nodes. By default it sets up the principal BSDF shader and we'll use the new addition to 2.80 principled volume shader. Generally uh, the principled volume connects a few volume shaders all together into one easily customizable node so that you don't have to set up the density parameter and stuff with separate nodes. And let's plug this into not surface but volume. Let's crank up the density to something like 3 and change the color powder pink and let's go to render view and BAM! We have our smoke. But right now it's not much visible. And let's turn on wireframe once more and just check out the settings of our sun lamp here. So let's rotate it. And let's also add some more lights. Point light here that will be one of our three point lighting setup. So we have the general sun lamp as a main light. So let's set the background to be black. Let's go to the lamp setting and make this one strength of 1000. Let's make it a little bit bigger size, like 2, so it will give softer shadows. Let's give it a blue tint, and to our sun lamp, maybe let's also give it a rotation downwards like this. Let's use nodes and let's set the lamp to 50 and a little bit warm, and let's check. So the point lamp is a little bit too weak. Let's make it... 500 so we have the fill light here in the shadows the sun lamp is maybe a little bit too strong so let's make it 30 nah, 40 is okay so that we get some sharp highlights as well and I think the smoke is already looking pretty cool I'll split this area and just leave the rendered preview here this way blender can calculate the things faster so let's quickly uh, duplicate this lamp as well, so shift D and place it behind this smoke simulation so we'll get a kind of a rim light and place it a little bit above, so G, Z and somewhere here, something like this. Let's make it also a little bit bigger like 5 and change the color to something orange like so that we can see the effect of the light really when we go to Rendered preview, we'll be able to spot the effect of each of the lights. The value is too low, so let's crank it up to something like 50, 100. So now we can see the effect of this light compared to the sun lamp because the uh, spot lamps and point lamps are much weaker. We can also call it a rim light for better uh, orientation, and this one feel like. The fill light is also too weak, so let's also crank it up. I think that we may want to fiddle with the size or the rim light to be smaller. So we think like the sharper highlights. I'm not sure about the color still, so maybe let's do it something in a different vein. Just play around and experiment with different settings until you find something you like. Maybe red. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Even more saturation. I feel like it's still kind of missing the power. Yeah, I kind of like this right now. Maybe the sun lamp needs to be a little bit stronger, like 45 or so. And let's also give it a bit of a punch in the yellow direction. The particles that are visible here 
they are right now just white spots so they have no shader and we want them to be part of this whole powder thing so let's quickly go with the particles alone so in the singular view set up the shader for these ones the material let's call it powder and let's use nodes so a principled shader is quite okay for our purposes let's quickly make a Control shift t principal shader setup i use a texture from texture haven uh, cc0 texture site you can use textures from and i'll use sand 4k if you go to see the preview of the material you see it's a sandy like material but we can't see it on the particles yet that is because it's using the uvs for mapping and we uh, can go with camera mapping for this one. Uh, generally it's just for adding some detail to the particles and I'm going to use uh, the micro displacements and to make this happen we need to add another modifier to this one and it's a subdivision surface modifier. Yeah, so now you can see it uh, added the subdivision surface and in order to use the micro, dis uh, micro polygon displacement we need to switch uh, from supported to experimental and right now in the subdivision surface modifier we have the option of adaptive subdivision to set up the type of displacement used uh, in our material we have to go to the material tab and there downwards downloads in the settings you have the surface and the volume and surface we can set up the displacement method and there's uh, bump only displacement only or displacement and bump and that's uh, what we're going to use you'll see that right now when it's using the displacement uh, the viewport will uh, have to update the geometry first, so it's, it needs some time for calculation. And you'll see something strange, like blobby, because the scale of the objects is really small after explosion, and here in the displacement, scale is set to 1, so that it's, each part is displaced by the textures a very, in very, very large amount so uh, too much for us so let's just decrease it to something like 0.2 I found these values to work quite well and also mid-level can be a little bit higher so this is the like middle point of the displacement you can experiment depending on your scene scaling and object scale so that, that's really codependent and there you go we have this little field of asteroids if you take a closer look mesh gain some nice detail uh, also in the base color I, I want to plug in a color mix node so that we will green a kind of pinkish color just like cosmetic powder I think it's looking pretty decent so now let's uh, turn on the visibility of the smoke as well if you want to uh, have a faster preview you can use the render region so control B allows you to make a frame and right now the render preview is limited to just this part and it should update much quicker of course depending on the power of your GPU so now for shading our two explosions differently I used a, an attribute of color and that's an attribute that's always calculated whenever smoke simulation is calculated you can see that there's uh, just one shader for the domain and we have to make this use the color that's uh, specific for the smoke emitter so shift add input node attribute and manually type color to get this value and then plug it into the color input right now if you take a look in the rendered preview it's using the smoke color that's set up for each of the emitters that's let me show you it's this color for the smoke and the other one for now when setting up for the final render, just remember about a few things. First of all, in the light paths, don't forget to turn some bounces for the volumetrics because we are using volumetrics here. I went with just 400 samples. I've also turned off the caustics because we don't need them here. When using the macro polygon displacements for the particles, don't forget to set up cycles for the experimental feature set. And one last thing I wanted to let you know about is the volumes uh, tab in the render settings, the step size. I use the lower one than the usual 
because the step size is uh, allowing for a greater uh, accuracy in rendering the volumetrics, but it also increases render time. So you read the description here that says lower values give more accurate and detailed results, but also increase render times. So just experiment with it and see what gives you the result that you're happy with. And now it's time to press the render button. So that's it for this tutorial, I hope you liked it and found some useful information in it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that bell button to get notified when new tutorials come out. Stay tuned for the live streams that are coming soon. We'll see you there and keep blending.